Hi, a very good evening to everyone. Welcome to ET, the talk show by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Now, in the technology business, the key is to move fast and be there before your competition. I've got a guest here tonight with me, Jeffrey. Jeffrey is a friend of mine, a long, long, long lost pal yeah. from uh, what, 20 years, almost 20 years yeah. back in we, high school days. We went to the, to the best school in <laughs> oh, Yes, <laughs> right. Um, and he is the owner and founder of Tenio Technologies, an IT company. Now, it was Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of uh, Facebook, who said this. Move fast and break things. If you're not breaking things, you're not moving fast enough. Right? And that's exactly what happened with Tenio. Right? Yeah. Starting in 2002, within the first year itself, he moved from a startup. And by the end of the first year, he was so big that he already had about eight people on his staff already. That, that, that talks about the speed <laughs> the, the, in the way he's moving, right? Yeah. And in the technology business, speed is of essence. Right, so please welcome um, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, thank you so much for being on my show. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. Been, it's been a really long time. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, Tenio. Yeah, Tom is just uh, too kind. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, a bit of background. Yes. Uh, I started off uh, Tenio Tom in yeah. uh, 2002. Right. So I was always working with uh, corporations out there. Yes. And uh, in 2002, I think something just wasn't complete. Right. I, I felt that, yeah. you know, I was putting too much hours for, for companies out there. Yes. And uh, ultimately, uh, you know, it's just, just this feeling. I don't know how to explain it. It's just mm. this feeling that says that yes. uh, you, you've got to come out and... Uh, Sorry, yeah. there's a bit of sound here. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so it's just this... Um, Feeling that says, that, okay, Jeff, you got to do something. Yes. I studied engineering. Yes. Uh, mechanical engineering. Right. I was a Tanaga National Scholar. Yes. So when I came back and I started off in IT. This was in Coventry University, wasn't it? No, no. I did my A-levels in uh -huh. uh, Coventry at yeah. P-Tech. Okay. In university, I went to University College London. Nice. London, nice. Right? Okay, okay. Cool. So I came back with a degree in uh, mechanical engineering. Right. And uh, so, yeah, so IT was, uh, at the end of the day, when, mm. when you do engineering, it's like, I said, Tom, uh, you don't know how to build a bridge today, right? Yes. So I said, buddy, I said, go build me a bridge. You just go to the library, you pull out these stacks of books, uh, E equals MC squared, F equals ME, right? <laughs> <laughs> so in, in, in a couple of months, you'll come up to me and, Jeff, this is exactly how you build a bridge, yeah. right? So in IT, however, you know, what, what intrigued me was, uh, you know, everything is something new. True. You know, back, back in the 90s, it was the dot-com boom days and HTML was just starting and people were just starting websites. Oh, I remember those days, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what I did was I, I picked up a book. I remember my very first book. It says okay. HTML for dummies. Okay. Right? That's, that's how I picked up all of the web stuff that I'm right. doing today, right? Okay. So in, in college, I did a lot of programming. So HTML was just a natural thing, you know. It's very easy for me to pick up. Right. And uh, yeah, so with that one book, uh, I started a bit of freelancing and finally okay. got my landed myself a job as a webmaster. That's how I started. Yeah. With Capital T and T. Yeah. Uh, spent I think about two close to two years, maybe two slightly years. over two years there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you know, after the two years, as I mentioned to you, just something wasn't complete. Right. Right. So right. so I told myself I'm going to work for myself. Didn't even know what I was going to do. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. honestly, I didn't know what yeah. I was going to do. Right. All I wanted to do is I wanted to do something fresh, something new and okay. something that would make a difference. Yeah. Right. So, so I started off in initially the, the first company that I have is Tenio Communications. Mm. It's my holding company. At sure. Home. And uh, one year, all I did was I did IT. IT was all I knew how to mm. do. So I did IT support contracts. I did like even PC maintenance, server right. maintenance, right. setting up a mail service networks. Yeah. So so I think in the in the three four years of working experience mm. that I have, I've been exposed to to a huge area all the way from systems, networks, applications. Yeah. And fortunately for me, I work for very nice bosses as well. Okay. And also not very nice ones. That's okay. The right. Why, <laughs> right. Why I right. And start, yeah. Started myself. That that's what yeah. builds character, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where you are today. Yeah. You know, is is partly due to that. You yeah. know, the, the not not nice bosses. Yeah. No. <laughs> I I I, I think when 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 I started off uh, Tenio, it was under the view that. There were a lot of things that we I didn't like yeah. when I used to work for someone. Right. So obviously these are things that you try not to hand me down in the sure. new company. Sure. So yeah. even to today I think we, we are very we're a very transparent company. There's no politics in the organization. Yeah. So 
our we have a vision we have a mission yes and the moment we set our mind to do something then everyone including myself will get our right. hands dirty and we'll just get the job done okay right okay so so that's uh, how how pretty much I started the business. Okay. Uh, you should have seen my my folks. You know, <laughs> very nice. My mom and dad. Uh-huh. You know, the great people. Yeah. And um, when when I told them that no, I don't want to work for someone anymore, yeah. and, and I I want to start my own business. Yeah. You know, I think they're a bit worried then. <laughs> I think they're still worried about me nowadays. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Yes. And I think they they gave me quite a lot of support. I yes. mean, my brother. Uh, yeah. And, uh, respect him all the time yeah uh, he gave me a lot of advice and all the motivation and right. he, he works in corporates right. till today he's in a corporate very high up in the mm-hmm. corporate but we, we just took different routes in life true. I think right? true yeah. I think I think some of us are just not cut out to be employees right I mean mm. I mean like you mentioned the thing that or the tipping point for you was mm. really you know finding that emptiness that mm. needed to be filled mm-hmm. you know that that void that mm-hmm. needed to be filled and, and mm-hmm. entrepreneurship was basically it i mm-hmm. mean starting up a business that you wanted to do yeah. um like for myself as well i mean even as an employee mm-hmm. um there were a lot of things that i wanted to do yeah. you know and you knew it was good for the organization mm-hmm. but because the company didn't belong to you yeah. the owners of course had their own yeah. thoughts and their yeah. own decisions yeah. so you were actually bound hand and foot to do a, do something that they wanted to do yeah. All right. So so on our own then then now we have a free hand of of actually doing what we really want to do what we were passionate about. Yeah. You know and, and and you mentioned earlier as well that you want to do something that that would matter. Yeah. You know that will actually help uh, yeah. uh the people around you. Yeah. And and that's I think that's a common trait in a lot of successful bus- uh, mm-hmm. business owners. Mm-hmm. Is that you know we are not out there to chase after the dollar or the mm-hmm. cents. Mm-hmm. You know it, but rather we are there to actually fulfill a need. Yep. Right to help somebody or to help society and a, mm-hmm. a, as a whole, mm-hmm. and eventually the dollar will follow. Yeah, very true. You know? Very true. Yeah. It's all about having that passion yeah. and that motivation. Yes. You know, Thomas. Yes. With when when I started the business, fortunately, it took yeah. me about a year and a half. You right. know, doing all this IT stuff, uh, writing business plans. You know, yeah. what, what am I going to do? Then came this whole web light plan. That's right. how it all started. Okay. I mean, the whole idea of web light was lightweight web applications ah, web like nice okay right so so i mean back then i mean you talk about content management systems people were still you know wow, what is this all about you right, know right. this was before wordpress joomla drupal and all yes. the cms companies yes. became yeah. became very big right so so the, we we spent a lot of time building a product mm-hmm. we spent a lot of time educating the people on what a cms is that you don't need to pay so high maintenance anymore right. you don't need to hire a webmaster in house where else you can put this little piece of software and you can do it yourself Precisely. right so so it was it was challenging trust me it was challenging yeah. i mean fortunately for our business when when we started i managed to raise some money uh, some private equity funds so that that gave us a couple of million to actually yeah. build the business yeah but between building the product looking for customers and finding money was you well, know, tough. was tough because tough, yeah. if you don't have a product, you don't have a customer. You don't have customer, you don't have money, and if you don't have money, then you you can't do your your exactly your, your development. Yeah, and, right? and all yeah. this usually is a chicken and egg situation. Yeah, you know, you, you even if the products, yeah. you, you don't have the customers, you yeah. don't have the money, yeah. you still have the same problem. You yeah, know? And, yeah. And, and and it's just you know, as an entrepreneur, what you need to do is you just need to constantly try and try because something doesn't work, just admit it. You know, don't don't try to. F- fight something that you can't fight yeah right so just you just need to be realistic to yourself this is not working uh, we need to change our plans yep. sit down with your fellow management team yep. your fellow team members yep. this is not working we got to change yep. and without changing i mean honestly i wouldn't be here today i, I remembered you know we we bled a lot of money though yeah right uh, for then you know someone that started off their own business and using someone else's money and yeah, you know the pressure exactly. was was really high yeah right but the the initial business was going after the smes right right so yeah. we went after the smaller companies you know we should charge like 2888 for a website three <laughs> i remember those days and one year no. we actually had like 80 or 100 websites that yeah. we managed to get right but unfortunately we couldn't complete the projects not because we couldn't do the work but the customers that we were acquiring yeah. did not understand timeline they did not right. understand scope of work because right. for them it's like cheap you know yeah. cheap good fast you know that triangle <laughs> you yes. you cannot have all three yes. yeah yes. all together yes. right yeah so so i think four four years down the line so somewhere around 2008 2009 uh, we were going through really stressful times right. the funds that we had was you know all the way at the rock bottom 
and it's a matter of you know we got to turn the business around or we got to decide what we want to do true, right true and uh, so at that point I think uh, could we made a call I said mm. okay let's change our customer segment since the SMEs are not working out let's go after more of the enterprise clients right you know and and that's what we did uh, we, we managed to secure a couple of larger deals and for us it was like wow this is nice we do almost the same amount of work, but we get paid 10 times more, right? right? It, it's because, I mean, we put in the detailing, yeah. but to the customer, because they're very used to, to being, the larger customers are very used to being uh, paying more yeah. uh, to their vendors, right? Yes. And come this young company, which is, you know, full of drive and motivation and, you know, all this energy, yes. doing it a fraction of the price of what these big firms are charging. That's like, Absolutely. And, and honestly, I, I thank these customers till today. I mean, the first 10 customers we had when yeah. I started, right? And even the, the larger customers that gave us a chance. I mean, purely because I think the, the key is to always give value to the customer. That's true. Right? That's Once true. you put that value <coughs> forward, it, even till today, I think we talk about value. How do we put value forward? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Uh, sometimes, I mean, as an entrepreneur, you might not have the cheapest product. Yep. Right? You can't compete. I mean, you're just a startup. That's right. But um, as you mentioned earlier, entrepreneurs will always help entrepreneurs. There's a soft spot there yes. because I think all of us have been through that yes. that particular time. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, well, that's, that's precisely the, huh. the, the, the rationale behind this whole show, you know, this ET uh, huh. uh, entrepreneur huh. talk, is to actually help um, inspire aspiring entrepreneurs, huh. you know, um, to, to see how people have been there, done that, you know, huh. brands today that are well known, like Tenio, huh. you know, and Weblight, huh. you know, um, didn't start easy. You know, you mentioned raising funds was one of the toughest things that you had to mm. face. Yeah. Um, so maybe you want to share some secrets into, you know, how, how would a startup company be able to to look for funds? Because that, that would be the ultimate, isn't it? That, I mean, mm. the resources. Mm. I mean, yeah, having the people, having the right people, having the, the, yep. the, the, the knowledge and the know-how yep. is, is one thing. Yep. But not having the, the dollars to fund it. Yeah, uh, and, and to manage it, right? That's another yeah. thing. So, so what are some of the avenues that you actually went into to, to get some funds? Oh, I, I, I think the landscape. I don't know. Fifteen years ago, and the landscape today, obviously, is you know completely yeah. different. Yeah. So when 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 I started, I guess fortunately, you know, I had very good friends and mm. very good networks yeah. uh, that could advise me. You know, I just sat down and I said, you know, this is what I wanted to do, and I managed to get a few friends together. Mm. Uh, you know, they helped me build a very nice business plan. I mean, till today, I look at that financial business plan. I'm like, whoa, wow, look at all these things that we <laughs> did, right? But but to to be able to to have a very clear view. What are the problems that you're solving? Yeah. So because if you're doing something, if you're not solving any problems out there, let's not waste time. Yeah, now. true. Right? Yeah. So, so, so that's number one. And realistically, be able to project, mm. you know, a lot of things from how fast your product can be built versus the acceptance of the market. So you, 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 you must really do research. And I would advise you to pick a business that you are an expert in. Right. I mean, I, I did IT. I worked in IT. Right. I, I majored in messaging systems. Uh, and, and, and communications yeah. and, and, and web technologies. That's right. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. Yeah. And till today, honestly, what the, the core businesses of Weblight, what we do, or even Engine Mailer, it's web application development and email. Yeah. Yeah? Email yeah. messaging and technology. So anything to do with the communications line. Right. So, so have that clear view. Number two is, I think, guess you can write the best business plans out there, but where do you then go and look for money? Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, again, I, w I was I was very fortunate. Yeah. I spoke to a few people, and and finally we came across a, a very friendly investor that says, "Okay, I, I, I trust in you. I believe in you. It sounds like something that." And honestly, he doesn't know technology, mm -hmm. right? So he he left it all uh, for for us to run it, right. And fortunately, we turned the business around to where we are today, right? right? Uh, but I think in today's landscape, because I'm pretty much Engine Mailer, the other franchise that we have yes. is pretty much like a startup company. Yeah. So you've got all sorts of uh, accelerators out there. You've got people like MDAC. You've got people like Magic, yeah. right? So so these are uh, systems that have been put in place to actually. Uh, encourage entrepreneurship mm. uh, in the country. Okay. Right. So there's a lot more assistance. I think they give you all the way from you know startup grants to to seed money, and they give you mentorship. Right. They of give course, you market access. SM, SME yeah. Corp and SME Bank yeah. and all this also come into play. Yeah. At, at some point as yeah. well, right? Yeah. So yeah. so so again, yeah, raising money is there. But but honestly, it from a raising money standpoint, uh, my my piece of advice is you know business plans are business plans. 
you can just work the numbers either way and make it look like this. You can be unicorn. as creative as possible. Yeah, <laughs> but but ultimately, be realistic. Start start small. Start where yeah. you are. I mean, you must yeah. have dreams, but don't don't try to you know. Rome wasn't built in a day, True. right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Be That's realistic. Don't overcommit. Because the moment you overcommit, and typically, you know, when you take investments and you don't meet your milestones, yes. then as entrepreneurs, you know, you will get diluted. Yes. You know, so you'll take more shares. And you should learn to manage yeah. expectations, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. always under-promise, yeah. over-deliver. You yeah. will agree with that. Yeah. 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 But, but, yeah, just be very focused. Just go after, go after your targets. Yeah. And I guess the, the, the common trait in a lot of entrepreneurs that you see out there, Tom, is like, that's, nothing is impossible. <laughs> Right, yeah. if there's a will, there's a way. Yes. Right, you just yes. need to find your way. Yeah. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I went through the the difficult path, you know, like yeah. figuring all this out yourself. Yeah. But today, I mean, that that's why I suppose you have mentorship programs and because that's right. the, the the experience that that we have learned, I mean, you can you can cut short an entrepreneur's journey by two or three years easily. Oh yes, easily. Yes, right? yeah. yes. Yeah. So you know, I mean, as well as I mean, you go and Google it and look for key to success to entrepreneurs mm. and all that. Mm. Chances are you will see a uh, popular quote, you know, it says the key to success is two things. Yeah. Take action, mm-hmm. find a way. You know, mm-hmm. it, it actually resonates a lot. Um, you know, I was reading a book by Richard Branson yeah. and he mentioned this in his book. He said, uh, when people ask him to do something, mm-hmm. right, he will say yes first and then learn how to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and would you agree that would be a, a, a good trait uh, for entrepreneurs, right? If you're looking for something and, and mm. like, like at one time yeah. where we were before, yeah. right? We're not yeah. sure what to what to yeah. do. Yeah. Then just do that first because there's an opportunity waiting for you. Yeah. Just grab onto it yeah. and then do it. And then as you find yourself, mm-hmm. then you need to realize something. There'll be a triangle of um, of elements that you yeah. will need to know. One yeah. is, are you passionate about what you're doing? Yeah. That would be the first key. Yeah. The second then would be. Are you good at what you're doing? Yeah. Can you be the best at what you're doing? Yeah. Right? And the third thing is, can you be profitable and sustainable in the long run? Yeah. So when these three mm-hmm. align, mm-hmm. then you've got it. Yeah. You, you've got a business model that will work. Yeah. Right. But I guess in that whole journey when you start, it's a matter of survival, Tom. Yeah. You know, I went through, you know, a good couple of years where I was eating Maggi Mee and I enjoy <laughs> Maggi Mee. Till today, honestly, I enjoy eating Maggi Mee, right? Right? But, but, uh, but, you, you are passionate about something, things work out sometimes, things don't work out sometimes, but yeah. you still got to survive. I think one of the, the, the advice that I could give mm. um, entrepreneurs out there is always define what is enough. I didn't mm. then, right. right? So what is enough in two cents? There must be a financial goal. Yep. There must be a time goal as well. Right. I mean, if you are working on something that you're so passionate about and you spend, I don't know, 10, 20 years on it and it's going nowhere and yeah. you're still fighting battles and trying to make ends meet, yeah. and I, I think it's time to call that project quits, not call it quits, yeah. and just call that project quits and move on with life. You right, know? because ego has no place yeah. no, no place in entrepreneurship. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, and, and right. for us, I think for the first five, six years, I was climbing up that hill, you know, yeah. it's like battling, you know, yeah. things were not right. Maybe I didn't have enough business experience. I didn't have enough technology experience. Yeah. We didn't have enough uh, networks out there. We were battling that hill, yeah. right? But but today, I mean, when you come across a problem, we sort of think about it differently. Yeah. You, you know, there's always easier way to achieve things right. and priorities change as well. Yeah. I mean, when I started business, I was what, 25, I don't know, mid-20s, 25, 26. Mm. And... Uh, Today, 40, I mean, you know, married, now happily married, two children. Priorities change. You That's know, right. those days you can go out, sit, sit down, you know, maybe have a drink and try to figure out a problem till four in the morning and yeah. today you can't, you know. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. but ultimately, every entrepreneur out there, I think it is very important yeah. that you have that drive to go to work in the morning. Right. You know, right. Right. Especially, especially when you work for yourself. You know, you don't have to punch card. There's no such thing as nine to five kind of thing, yeah, right? That's important, right? So you you must have that discipline to actually wake up, yeah. and 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 actually want to go to work, yeah. right? There yeah. are times that you know I I spend a year and a half going to a Starbucks, you know, those days, yeah. uh, just buying 
coffee and tea, whatever, all day, sitting down there, figuring out what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I didn't have an office, didn't right. have money, mm. right? I had a bit of savings. Right. But you must have that drive because without that drive, then you can't, you can't yeah. really achieve what that, you want to achieve. That, that's that's yeah. very, very, very yeah. true. I yeah. mean, like, even yeah. from my own, from my own yeah. experience as mm. well. Mm. You know, I, as an employee, I used yeah. to look forward to public holidays and weekends. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then ever since I came out on my own, yeah. right? I find that public holidays is just such a waste of time, you know, yeah. it's not productive, you know. Yeah. And my wife noticed that. My yeah. wife was telling me, this, you know, I, I noticed that you are busier than yeah. when you were as an employee, yeah. Yeah. but you seem happier each evening when you come home. So he, she asked me, this, what happened? You know, yeah. you are busier now, but yeah. you're happier. Yeah. So said, That's precisely because I'm yeah. doing something yeah. that I'm passionate and driven to do. Yeah. You know, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not forced to do something that I don't want. Yeah, very you important. Know? Yeah, exactly. very important. Right. Even till today, I mean, even uh, the the people that are working for me till yeah. today, you know, I'm I'm not hiring someone and hoping that, you know, I'll tell you to do something and you do it. Yeah. Right. You're hiring someone, and in view of them, you know, using their skill sets, their experience. Right. I mean, even the newer software as a service, cloud products yeah. that we have. I mean, it's not what I want. Uh, we, we know we are heading there. This is yeah. where I tell you this is what we want to do. Yeah. But the people building it are just using their own imagination and their skills. And, right. and us as seniors and mentors, just sorts of like you, you, you pull everyone together yep. to have that award-winning product that can, you know, that can be commercialized and yeah. that can be monetized in the fastest exactly. way possible. Right? Exactly, right? Yeah. So the, I, the yeah. idea is yeah. that you, we hire the people. We, we, mm. we all talk about hiring the right people. Yeah. But what is the right people? You know, okay. so, so I think, I don't know, mm. I mean, I, if you can share, share, with, share my view, yeah. I think the right people would be people who share your passion. Yeah, I, I can tell you, uh, I mean, for the last 15 years, I've had problems with people. I okay. think we interview twenty, <laughs> a few hundred entrepreneurs. Yeah. That is a common problem yeah. that we all have, right? Yeah. But the key thing I look for is basically attitude. Right. Attitude. Right. Attitude. So your 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 education plays a part. You, you know your your appearance play a part. You, you know your ability to yeah. to write plays a part. But the the key thing is attitude. Yeah. You know, um, I remember now in in the early days when when we just started off Weblight, we were looking for graphic designers. Right, there's this true story, yeah. Okay. And this guy walks in. I was with a uh, fellow of my management team members. We saw his CV. Good, my well, works in. I think he works in a karaoke as a waiter. <laughs> okay. We're like, wow. But his work was good. Mm -hmm. Call him in for an interview. Uh, give him a job. He excelled at it. You know, he he gave us really good designs when we were starting. You know, designs that we never could do ourselves. Right. And I think he eventually moved on. He joined like larger design agencies and uh, is working mm. probably abroad right now. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. So along the ways, you come across people with good attitude, you build. Yeah. Right. I mean, someone saw something in me. I don't know what they saw. <laughs> <Okay. right? laughs> but someone saw something in me. They, yeah. they, they believed in me. They gave me the chance. That's right. And I, I grew very fast when I was working in a, in, in mm. a corporate. Right. And I, I think these are opportunities that uh, for me, everybody deserves a chance, True. right? But if someone gives you a chance, make full use of it. Don't take things for granted. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. Uh, because there, there are people I know, um, mm. like you mentioned, attitude is a very important yeah. thing. I mean, some mm. of them just don't have, don't have the right attitude, mm. right? So even if opportunities max him in the face, yeah. you know, he just mm. will not be able to see it. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and that's precisely the problem with a lot of people right now. Yeah. Um, I, I conduct a lot of talks as well mm -hmm. on, on, on my own. Yeah. And yeah. I speak to a lot of um, students, especially SPM school leavers, yeah. you know, at, at the verge of thinking of what program to study, you know, yeah. so that they yeah. will embark on the right career, so to speak, right? Yeah. And I always throw them this challenge, yeah. you know, I always tell them this, you know, 30 years ago, you talk about do more with more. Yeah. 15 years ago, you talk about do more with what you have. Mm -hmm. Today, we're talking about do more with less. Yeah. 15 years from now, when this group of people become mm. middle managers and senior mm. managers, mm. it's going to be do more with nothing. Yeah. The question I throw to them is, are you ready for that scenario? Mm. You know, are you mm. the right people mm. for the job? Mm. You know? uh, speaking of which, mm. you know, what, 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 is your, what are your thoughts about this? Is, is that a real possibility that we'll be doing more with nothing? The, the world has changed, Tom. <laughs> the world has changed. <laughs> You know, like the, the the cloud service that we have today. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm still building it and I'm still learning it as I go. Yeah. It's I'm I'm getting customers signing up. 
yep. and and paying me money when I haven't shook their hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so not not used to it okay. because we were so used to to sitting down in this enterprise. Uh, seen large companies consulting and advising, but today it's all about the internet, man. Yep. Right? I mean, you want to buy something today, or you want a particular service. What do you do? You go to Google. Yep. Right? You ask Google. Yes. Right. So Google's your best friend. <laughs> right. And and uh, and I think the day will come where all the simple things out there will be substituted by machines. Right. I mean, I can see that coming. Yep. Uh, I- in the last five years, we've invested a lot back in the technology mm. I mean it's difficult to find people I yeah. mean let, let alone I think it's a global problem but in Malaysia even mm. more challenging yeah. uh, uh, situation that we have right and uh, yeah so so invest in machines and these machines are not going to to lie you know they're not going to fall asleep True. And yeah yeah uh, are we getting some nice comments um, yeah. looks like yeah. it yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah so in, in machines is one yeah and uh yeah, I guess ultimately they don't make the younger generation are not like our mm. generation, Tom. Yeah, right. We have got an interesting question here by yeah. Samantha Fong. Yeah, um, she's asking this. Uh, she, thanks for sharing. Yeah, hi and, Samantha. Hello. And, and she says yeah. this. She says, um, "To what do you owe or attribute your success?" Okay, I think. Wow, that, I mean, it's like. A speech for an Academy Award. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the amount of people I have to thank, right? <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier, I mean, uh, there's there's a few things. Number one is, of course, uh, to to my partners, my shareholders. Mm. Uh, without which, uh, I mean, we wouldn't even have the capital to start with right. to begin with. Uh, the the first few customers that we acquired. I mean, honestly, I didn't even know what I was selling, and they gave me a chance. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. it's basically entrepreneurs giving entrepreneurs a chance. Yeah. Uh, the third one will be, I mean, the people. Uh, mm. Fortunately, I had very strong people with me from mm. day one. Yeah. I think uh, most of our senior liners have been with the company for right. probably 12, 13, 14 years right now. Right. So we, we we started from from a, from nothing, and we built we built we built year on year. Mm. We built those things, yeah. and uh, I guess finally, whatever it is, you need support from your family. Right, you know your parents. I mean, my wife and my brother, my children. You know, without that support, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, your friends, you know, sitting down there, and and one one thing that I learned, um, I mean the the hard way. I mean, in in any startup, normally you mm. get a group of people, two yeah. or three people. In yeah. my case, you know, I I pretty much was alone, mm. and we found a pe- few people to help out. You know, my management team. Mm. But from a from a shareholder standpoint. The burden is very heavy right. when you're alone. You know, when you have yeah. problems, you know who do you speak to? You know, and, and that whole thing, your shoulders become very heavy. And when finally you break free, I mean, you feel like, you know, that's the most wonderful thing that, that's ever happened to you. Yeah, absolutely right. right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that's to Samantha. Yeah. yeah. That answers your question. Great. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah you, you uh, also mentioned uh, just now, you know, one uh, of the things uh, or, or one of the groups of people that you want to attribute your success to uh, is uh, your, your staff, actually, yeah. your team, uh, uh, your team, right? We know, I noticed as well from your from your Facebook pages mm-hmm. and all mm-hmm. that, you know, recently you had uh, like a team building event for your, for yeah. your staff and all that mm-hmm. and they all yeah. look pretty good, you know. And all yeah. that. Um, would employee engagement be something that you think is a real um, factor, you know, in, in motivating them, rather than inspiring them, you yeah. know, that kind of thing, you know, to keep them uh, driven to come to work every morning? Yeah, definitely. I guess number one is, I mean, like what, how we need to be motivated to continue yeah. doing what we're doing. I mean, yeah. the same will apply to everyone that works yeah. for us. Yeah. So, so th- how how we do it in 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 Weblight is, I mean, everyone has their own subject matter areas. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, it overlaps. Right. But I mean, if someone's good at design, he's going to spearhead design. Yeah. If someone's good at like you know HTML five, they HTML right. five. Right. right. So everyone is sort of a little captain in their own islands, and okay. you've got to give them the freedom. To, to actually do whatever they need to do. Right. So we have uh, WIPs every Monday, mm. so of which we sit down and say, okay, these are all the projects we need to work on. But we try very much not to micromanage their time right. because in order for someone to, to, to progress, you know, they mm. need to advance their own skills as well. Yep. So I mean, with, with the internet today, this is something that we don't block in the office. Mm. You can go on Facebook or on any other site that you want, but the whole key is for you to, to develop yourself. Mm. Right? And when it comes to employee uh, motivation, Eh? Okay, number one, uh, 
good environment to work in. Right. Right. People don't want to come, and it's filled with politics, and you know, a lot of negativity. I would yes. call it in yeah. the office. So yeah. we, we try to be as transparent as possible. Mm. I mean, work is work. Someone has to do it. Yeah. Right. So, but we we learn how to play as well. You know, you work hard, you got to play hard. Uh, second one is I think from a compensation standpoint, yeah. monetary compensation. Uh, we might not be able to pay as much as you know large companies and all that, but you got to pay the market rate or slightly above market rate. Yeah. So you can't you can't really say or oh, you know we are small, so can you take the hit first and when I make money then I'll pay you money because you know you've got families, other people yeah. need to survive as well, yeah. right? So that's something that we don't do. Yeah. In fact, one of the things I think we've done. Uh, in, in Teneo itself since we started 14 years ago uh, first I don't know 6-7 years of the business we're losing money mm. but we even when we're losing money the shareholders decided that we've got to give bonus right. to the staff right. uh, it's not their fault we're losing money mm. uh, yeah. you know that's yeah. the plan yeah. <laughs> right that's the plan yeah. of course we were a few years delayed yeah. but that's the plan so I mean, so that they've got to stay motivated mm. and finally I think most important as software people uh, you, you it's nice to see your software being used by a lot of customers you know there's no point building something and you know it's yeah yeah i've got this great thing and sitting there white elephant no one uses it right yeah. so it's nice so so as we started i think one of the key milestones were we we went after more customers mm. then we went other after the larger customers right then the next stage okay let's go after the the, the bigger financial institutions let's go after different industries so year on year you see wow the customers are maturing mm. and and we are doing more complex things right. so as a result i think of it all you end up uh, doing a lot of things because your portfolio just expands and expands so mm. you just need to know how to build that stack right right so there, there must be some sort of check and balance between how much we are able to commit because i mean if you're too young and you go commit on too large of a project then you know that your team members can't do it as right. well so it's like a chess game knowing what you have and making full use of your pieces yeah. and optimizing, optimizing everyone yeah, yeah. basically making sure that the entire thing functions as one unit nice right. yeah. okay we opened the yeah. show with uh, talking about speed yeah right how, mm. how, how fast you mm. need to move especially mm. in the technology tech sector right yeah. um, and uh, Tenio was awarded the SME 100 the mm. top 100 fastest moving company mm. uh, in, in Malaysia mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that oh I, I think it was I mean we've got a couple of awards over the years we yeah. we were one of those companies that were too busy doing work that we never had time submitting for awards <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I mean uh, yeah, that reminds me I mean, thank you for reminding me yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, I'll try to get a few more of those awards in but, but uh, I think it was a good recognition mm -hmm. uh, uh, basically we, we, we grew a business yeah. uh, we had a solid product right. uh, we had a nice customer base our financials were strong you know you're, you're profitable and we have a certain amount of growth yeah. I think that's one of the uh, selection criteria for these awards, mm. uh, right? So uh, I mean that the award is not, uh, not not so much for 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 myself, but to all of the staff that have worked hard for it. I think they, you know, we enjoyed uh, uh, attending that event. It's uh, a recognition for their yeah, effort as well, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. puts hard work into what we have yeah. today, yeah. right? You know, sometimes you know we shout at each other in the office. <laughs> I mean that's inevitable, <laughs> right? <laughs> you 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 sort of like agree to disagree, yeah, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about um, the products that um, Tenio has. Yeah. I mean, we 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 talked about web like, yeah. you know, as as yeah. a as a website management or content yeah. management yeah. Uh, kind of service. Yeah. Um, and we also touch very little, uh, very mm. slightly about mm. engine mailer. Mm. Tell us a little bit more about engine mailer because I see some some um, some vouchers that we have here. Yeah. Right. Uh, so tell us a bit more engine mailer yeah. and how how these vouchers work. Okay, so so uh, let me tell you a little bit about what these businesses are to yeah. begin with. So the weblight business is your typical uh, a software business, right? Right. So we have software that that addresses web content management. So mm -hmm. we build a lot of websites, web portals, uh, all the way from basic corporate websites to very complicated integrated websites. Yeah. You know, you got yeah. integration integration to payment systems, CRM systems, mm. you know, all sorts of systems yeah. out there. And w the other area that we're very strong is when it comes to marketing, when it comes right. to 
email marketing, mm. you know, subscriber data management. Right. Uh, and we have platforms, I think, over the years, we own all the infrastructure. Uh, if you need me to send millions of emails in a couple of hours, I'll do it for you. Right? Okay. But, but legitimately, not, yeah. not as spammers. I think. Yeah. So that's, that's our enterprise customer range. Right. But, but when we, you look back at the, the whole business in the last three years, we go out there as how we educated the market on web content management. Mm. We've been educating people on email marketing, what are the best right. practices, mm. you know, how to avoid spam, how to yeah. get the, how to clean your, your, your email addresses. Mm. And a lot of times we don't, the customers really want to do it, mm. but perhaps they don't have that kind of volume. I mean, not mm. many people can send at least 500,000 emails mm. in a month, you know, mm. that, and that's the customers that yeah. we go after. So we found out that a lot of times we were doing all the education and some cloud service is getting the deal. <laughs> right? It so, happens. Yeah, you know, it happens. It, it happens. happens. And it's, it's a very frustrating thing, yes. especially when people say, do you have an equivalent service? I don't mind signing up for you because yeah. you guys obviously know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right? So, so I think, you know, every company out there, let alone tech companies, you need right. to go through this whole digital transformation. Yeah. Right? I mean, the, the web light business is an enterprise game. Right. If you look at the market conditions today, enterprise games are becoming smaller and smaller. More and more companies are, right. you know, opting for cloud services where you, you, you know, the way customers are consuming IT has changed. Right. I want to try first. Yes. I don't want any contracts. Yes. If I like, I like. If I don't like, I don't like. That, yeah. That's the trend. That's yeah. how things are yeah. changing. So you got all the free trial stuff going on. Correct. That Correct. As well, yeah. So 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 what we essentially did was. We took our 13 years of experience in email marketing, mm. right? And we built a cloud product. That's right. Engine Mailer. Okay. Right? So the front might be different because now it's like one of those, you know, go to the website, this website out there, yeah. sign up for free, no credit cards required, go up there and manage all of your stuff. And if you like it, then you just put your credit card and you, you pay for yeah. the service, right? Yeah. So I think that that's one of the transitions that we did. I think internally we talk about transformation, right? Mm. So this is one thing. Uh, the other thing we, we spoke about internally is like our business is confined, I would say, to to regions. Mm. Yeah, Malaysia, 90, I don't know, 98, 99% of our business is in Malaysia. Mm. We have the occasional customers in Indonesia, for right, example. Right. But in order for me to set up a web light business in Indonesia, I need to fire up an office. We need very strong partners. Yes. You've you got to physically yes. be there to represent That's right. yourselves. That's right. right. Then you talk about how do we then move to other countries? Mm. Then it becomes so. I think that the cloud is amazing. I mean, if the cloud was there 13 years ago, I think Weblight would have been in the cloud, <laughs> right? We, we, that's how we, we, we wanted yeah. to start. Yeah. We wanted to go after the mass. It's just that's that right. technology wasn't there, infrastructure yeah. wasn't there. Mm. So I think with, with, with uh, Engine Mailer itself, we hope that, I mean, this will become one of the leading. Uh, cloud email marketing mm. products right. uh, in, in South Asia. Right. Uh, it's actually a very good product. So th those vouchers are here. Yep. Uh, so if you look at these vouchers, yep. right? So it's very simple. So if you go to Engine Mailer uh, mm. at the moment, uh, can sign up free, no credit cards, and we give you 10,000 free emails every month. Mm -hmm. So I mean, for smaller companies, startup companies, entrepreneurs, please go in. And, and there are three core service offerings in Engine Mailer. Mm. The first one is what we call the, the subscriber management. Right. So we provide a very comprehensive database management tool. Okay. So you can create your own uh, database fields for mm. whatever business you're at. Uh, the whole idea is I think we, we've we seen in the last 13 years, the effectiveness of someone communi someone's communication will depend on how clean their email addresses right. are. So yeah. if you start importing dirty names and you start blasting, I mean, it's a problem. It's a waste of time, yes. right? So we let you manage the database properly mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. And and throughout the entire journey, even if you import a list with duplicates or bad email addresses, the system is the one that cleans everything right. up for you, okay. right? And and uh, what's nice about Engine Mailer is we've decided that to, to make it very easy from a pricing standpoint. Mm -hmm. So we don't even have a uh, number of subscribers to limit people for. So you can put... You can dump half a million names in there. It doesn't really matter. Mm. And we only charge you based on number of emails sent. Right. Right? Okay. So the second uh, pillar that we have is what we call the campaign management. Right. So it allows a typical person, you know, the other problem that, that we face is apart from data, you know, you look at those nice newsletters, you know, that you get, you know, people like Asia, you, you know, get the bigger brands, right? It looks nice. But sometimes you get it from a local company. It's just text-based, one picture smack in there. And it's not very visually appealing. Right. So so we, we put a lot of effort in design campaign management so that uh, you, you can 
very easily without IT knowledge drag and drop really nice templates mm-hmm. so that your communications become very professional right right yeah and and the third one I think complementing this whole thing mm. the trend hasn't hit Malaysia yet mm. right apart from marketing emails today we talk about uh, e-deliveries right we talk about sending electronic statements mm. you know notifications when you come out from a uber ride or right. grab ride it says yeah. thank you your fee so these are real-time transactions right right so we provide all the api so that you know if you have a back-end system or if you're a startup company and you need yeah. some someone to deliver emails for you yeah engine miller it is so so we combine database management marketing and transactional into one single platform cool right so what's coming soon this year is we're going to complete the final piece of the product which yeah. is the automation product yeah and right? then we will have a very nice uh, malaysian based uh, email service provider right. to to really go and compete globally. Cool. Right. Yeah. So so yeah. so this voucher. Um, yeah. If if you actually apply the the special code that's on the on the voucher. Yeah. All right. So instead of the ten thousand that you get every um, every month, all right, you get additional two thousand emails that you can send each month if you apply this code. Yeah. So this is only available with us on ET. All right, so write to us if you're interested and we will be happy to send you a voucher. Yeah, so I've left uh, 50 vouchers here with ET. Yeah, oh, nice. Right? Okay. Yeah, so they, they all have unique codes, Yeah. right? So yeah. Uh, first come, first serve. Uh, yes. If you need more when it runs out, just call Tom. And <laughs> know how to get more Great, food. okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's just take a couple of questions from, uh, from, from the audience. Uh, we have... Um, uh, Zachary up. Zachary up asked this question. He says, "What is your opinion on software as a service? Where do you see Engine Mailer in the coming years?" Oh, uh, thanks, uh, Zach. Uh, he actually works for me. Oh, that's he. Yeah, he's my head of services. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Zach, for participating. <laughs> the support, right? Yeah. So I, I guess to answer, yeah, that's that's really good support, eh? yeah. Yeah, So yeah, I, I mean, the world today is about yeah. you know software as a service, right. platform as a service. Right. You look at companies like Amazon. You look at Microsoft. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're all yeah. going to the cloud. Yeah. So I think the days of I mean, we own a lot of servers. I think the days yeah. of owning servers will become, you know, obsolete True. in a few years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's all yeah. about. Uh, in a way, leasing compute power that you need mm-hmm. and, and being able to scale as and when needed. Yep. I think that, that's where yeah. the, the, the hardware is coming from. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Zach, to answer your question, I think uh, you know very well that uh, software as a service is our next transformation. So <laughs> I hope you are with us as we take that. <laughs> Great, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, my, my colleagues themselves yeah. on, the, on, the, on, on ET, mm. the talk yeah. show itself, yeah. I mean, they, they mm. were asking if huh? you could share with us what yeah. your aspirations or your vision is. Uh, maybe let's, 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 let's narrow down that a mm. little further. Mm. Maybe your, mm. your vision for perhaps um, the IT, IT landscape in Malaysia, perhaps. Yeah, I, I think, I, I mean, I'll speak purely from a marketing automation standpoint. Yeah. I think that's yeah. my forte, right? right. I, 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 compared to what's happening in the US mm. and what's happening in Europe or even Australia, yeah. I think, unfortunately, we're a little bit behind, mm. right? Uh, but uh, and that's not bad news at all, you know. Mm. We just need to catch up. Right. And in, in that whole journey, I think there are a lot of, um, I would say, very successful or very, you know, uh, innovative IT companies that are coming out in mm. Malaysia, especially yeah. in the last two, three years. Right. So I think we, we just need to, to, to be able to weather this transformation, mm. right? And I mean, the more, I mean, I, I hope that uh, there'll be more assistance given by governments, uh, right, to, to all the entrepreneurs out there. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, uh, you can't really hold an entrepreneur's hand too much because you've got to let the guy fall <laughs> and learn from his mistakes. Yes. You, know, you can't, you can't yes. teach someone to be an entrepreneur. Yes. It's a skill. It's like, yes. I can't teach you to be a salesman. You either know how to sell, sell or you don't know how to sell. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it, I think the similar principle applies to entrepreneurs. Great, it? Right. great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to wrap up soon. Oh, but okay. in, in wrapping up, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, yeah. just two questions that I, I have for yeah. you. Yeah. One is... Um, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced mm-hmm. um, when you were in your startup journey? Yeah. You know, and how did you overcome them? My biggest challenge? Mm. Wow. Maybe name one. I mean, you mentioned raising yeah. funds earlier. Yeah. Right? And then you said you had, you had yeah. people yeah. who were there. To for, fortunately for me, I had to only raise funds once. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? And then we, we, we built the business to yes. a point that we, we generated our own funds. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the most vicious cycle for me 
it's that sales cycle. The sales cycle. The sales cycle, mm. right? Uh, you know, we especially in IT, mm. we talk about the web design industry. You yeah. do a website, you know, there are like, and you know, thousands of companies out there. Yeah. So how do you differentiate yourself? All right. Right. So, so the most difficult part, if you ask me, the challenge is to how we projected value in our business, mm. and and not only that, for for a small little company, to to actually walk into large corporations and to be able to justify value, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that we right. overcome. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So, so very often, you know, if we go for meetings in a bigger company, you know, there might be ten people sitting there. Yeah. Sometimes it's only myself or myself and another guy, right? Yeah. But I, I guess we've learned not to be intimidated. Right. Um, I mean, the way you look at it, yeah, there might be one or two of us, but one or two of us more no more than fifteen of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so w- what's the matter? So, so just just you just got to be, you know, honest about it. Like yeah. that's your passion. Yeah. That's your. Your your expertise, yeah. or even what we recently did on our website was mm. the whole inbound marketing. That's our expertise. Right. Our expertise is web application and email marketing. Right. That's what we do. Right. Right. What you do yeah. best. What you do best. Great. Right. Okay. Yeah. My last question to yeah. you would be yeah. this, Jeff. Yeah. What would your advice be to someone who aspires to be like you? Just, just do it. Don't quit. I mean, if you if you believe strongly in whatever the product or, or service that you're trying to provide. You have that 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 feel that you know this is going to be the next big thing, mm. right? And if you have that drive, don't don't let that drive go because that drive is the one that's going to make you succeed, and it's also going to be the one that's going to break you, yeah. right? So just just continue to be passionate in whatever that you want to do, and I mean God willing, I mean everything will be. Well, 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 takes its take its place like, at the end yeah. of the day, right? Great, yeah. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah, pleasure. So, yeah, guys, you've heard it from the man himself. Yeah. Um, and if I can summarize um, the whole session tonight, uh, basically it's just down to two things I mentioned earlier as well, right? Hmm. Take action, find a way. Yep. Right, and 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 you will find a way, no matter what. Sorry, some, somehow or rather, yeah. right? So, thank you very much for joining us. You've been with us on ET. Um, the talk show by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Good night. Thank you very much, Tom, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.